Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial which is the first in a short series looking at shape layers. Shape layers were introduced in After Effects CS3 and are a great additional tool to be able to create things like additional assets, animating items, backgrounds, buttons, all kinds of different bits and pieces and they're very easy to animate and you can do some very powerful things with them. However, sometimes there's a bit of confusion about when somebody's creating a mask and when somebody's creating a shape layer, and this is often because the same tools can be used to either create a mask or to create a shape layer, and these are these tools up here on the timeline. So we've got a whole series here, from the rectangle tool all the way down to the star tool, and we'll be looking at lots of these in coming tutorials. And we have the pen tool, which we will just be looking at as the pen tool, no other options. And in fact, text tools can also be used to create shapes. Okay, now to clear up the confusion, the first thing I'm actually going to do, take my selection tool, is I'm actually going to create a standard solid layer. So I'm gonna select my composition, which is the only thing I've got, which is a standard five second composition, and I'm going to go to layer, new, solid, and it's called a yellow solid, and make sure it's comp size and click okay. And that's created a yellow solid. So far, so good. Now, with that layer selected, I'm going to go up to these tools up here which are often used to create shapes but are also used to create masks and I'm going to click the rectangle tool and as soon as I click the rectangle tool with the layer selected that means I'm going to be drawing a mask on the solid layer so if I now click and drag inside the window I'm creating a mask and when I let go you'll notice down here in the timeline mask 1 has been created and if I twirl down mask 1 you'll see that I've got a number of options so I can actually change the mask path I can change the feather so if I pull the feather out that basically makes the edges nice and soft I can change the mask opacity so I can make it completely invisible or semi visible or completely opaque and the mask expansion is just for making the thing a bit bigger or a bit smaller while still keeping hold of those very soft edges from the feather so I've created a mask in other words I have just decided to show a selected portion of the solid layer the rest of the solid layer is, if you like, there but hidden. All I can see is this bit that is shown with the mask. Now if I want to rotate this shape, I can open up the transforms for the layer and I can go down to rotation and as soon as I start to rotate you will see that rotation has used the anchor point for the layer which is right slap bang in the middle and it's rotating around that anchor point. If I wanted to rotate around the mask itself, I would need to relocate this anchor point to the center of the mask and then rotate it around that relocated anchor point. That actually isn't that easy to do. One way of doing it would be to select the Choose Grids and Guides option down here, choose Ruler, and then inside the ruler you just hover until you get the double arrow, click, drag and pull it across until it's right slap bang in the middle of those handles and then do the same at the top click drag until it's right slap bang in the middle of those handles and you would need to zoom in to double check you're in the middle because this distance out you'll never be able to tell if you're really there and then you would take the pan behind tool here and then you would take hold of the anchor point and snap it in the middle that would be the way that you would then be able to go down to rotation and hope that you pretty much got it absolutely in the center so you could rotate it around that particular item just going to right click and reset so that's how you could do it so that you can rotate around a mask but a mask is drawn on a layer which is choosing to show you bits of the layer now you can add multiple masks to a layer to show a whole different selection of different items on a layer but you are still revealing and hiding bits on a layer you aren't creating anything separate now I'm just going to quickly get rid of these guides and I'm going to get rid of my rulers and I'm going to this time twirl up the solid layer and I'm going to click away so that it is completely unselected. So if I was to now go up and choose my shape tools or my mask tools up here, look what changes on my toolbar. As soon as I click here, new items appear. 
There's a whole series of different items. I particularly want you to notice these ones here at the moment. I've got one that says fill, which is yellow, which means if I click on it, I'll have other options, which we'll cover in the next tutorial. And I have a swatch, a color swatch, which means I can decide the color of what I'm going to create. Likewise, it can have a stroke, and I can choose the color of the stroke and how wide or how small that stroke is in terms of pixels. So at the moment it says two, let's move that out so that we could see it to say eight. So when I create something, it's gonna have a stroke, which is yellow, its fill's gonna be blue or cyan, and it's gonna have a stroke of eight. Now, without the layer selected, and this is important, nothing has been selected, and notice also down here that this has got a yellow square telling me it is a solid layer, okay? Because I'm gonna create something now without that selected, which looks different. So if I click and drag and let go, something relatively similar has been created on screen and yet look down in here in my timeline i've got a different icon which is a star telling me that a shape layer has been created very helpfully it is called shape layer one and i've got a different set of contents i don't have anything that says mask but i have the transforms for the layer which are standard so anchor point position scale rotation opacity but these are note the transforms for the whole layer now if I rotate at this point you'll see that it rotates from the anchor point of the layer and that's no different. So I'm just going to right click and reset that. But if I open up where it says rectangle 1 you'll see that as well as rectangle path, stroke, fill I've got something that says transform for rectangle 1. Now I've got the transforms for the whole layer but I also have the transforms for this individual item here, for this rectangle. And if I open up these transforms, you'll see I've also got additional items. Twirl it open, and you'll see that what I have is the anchor point, position, scale, and then two new ones. One's called skew, and the other skew axis, and rotation opacity. Now look what happens when I start to rotate the transforms for the rectangle. So if I take rotation and start to drag it, you'll see that it rotates from the center of that shape layer. So I can animate the shape layer's rotation without having to fool around and try and find its center point like I had to with the mask on the solid layer. It's there inside the transforms for the rectangle. Also, if I want to, I can select my shape layer and I can click and drag again and create a second rectangle, rectangle two open up rectangle 2 and you'll see that I have transforms for this rectangle which are different to the transforms for the first rectangle. So I can open that one up and if I want to I can rotate that one as well and let's play with skew. If I click skew it just skews it slightly one way or the other and if you play with the skew axis you can get quite, quite an interesting looking sort of 3D look if you're lucky. So you see I've got transforms for one shape, two shapes, but they're different, as well as retaining the overall transforms for the whole layer. So if I want to rotate both of these items together, I can actually rotate the rotation for the transforms for the whole layer, and both of them will rotate around the anchor point for the layer. Confused? Well, there's an awful lot more to shape layers than this. If I want to, with this layer still selected, so let's select rectangle two, I can go up to the color swatch next to fill and I can change its color. So I can make it say a bright red and I can change its stroke from yellow, click in the swatch again to say a nice dark blue. And of course, I still have the options to be able to change the opacity of each of these different shapes. Now this so far is only for rectangles. But of course, there are, as you've seen before, more than just rectangles. There's rectangles, there's rounded rectangles, there's ellipses. So let's create an ellipse. Click and drag, and you'll see that ellipse one is created. And ellipse one, again, has its own series of transforms. So if I want to, I can rotate just that item. And of course, with ellipse one selected, I can go in and I can change its colors and make it look entirely different if I want to. Now this is for creating all kinds of different assets. And you will find that they're very powerful shape tools. We can create all kinds of different things, particularly when we start to look at some of the other options under fill and stroke. And eventually when we get to this powerful little button here, which says add, and then the whole world of different things open for us. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you some other animation options. 
for standard shapes we're going to be looking at particularly the star tool and we'll also be looking at the other options we have for fill and stroke so I hope you found this tutorial useful that it's cleared up the difference between a mask which shows and hides areas of a layer and between shape layers which can if you like have multiple items on a single layer all of which have their own transform options so we can animate them separately while still being part of the same layer. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis. Join me in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.